okay, well, let me just introduce you first of all. All right. Um, this, uh, from the original programme, uh, there is a change, and <coughs> Barnaby's come in at the last minute, really. Originally, it should have been Paula Nottingham, who's in charge of the BA in Professional Studies at Middlesex University. She was going to come in and do a talk on using social media in teaching. She had to cancel at the last minute, so I'm hopefully trying to get her back to come and do that same session in June, because it fits in with our theme of blogging and all of that that we're trying to run at the moment. Having said that, though, I'm really pleased to actually have Barnaby to come in from Blickbook. Um, I first came across it via Miku, and he, he called me into his, and he's actually using it with his students, but I suspect Barnaby's going to say a little bit more about that. Yes. Um, so it's just a normal format. So Barnaby, if you can speak for about 20 minutes, half an hour, yeah. and then obviously we'll take loads of questions and uh, contributions after that. Okay, so Great. To you. Thanks. Um, yes, yeah, so I'll probably just probably be hopefully on the 15 to 20 minute side because what we do is actually quite simple and it's hopefully quite easy to explain within lots of time if you have any questions. Um, so, yeah, I'm from Blitbook. I'm one of the founders of Blitbook. Uh, we've been around for about three years. Uh, we came out of London Business School and UCL from a project looking at teaching. Um, so we've got a mixture of sort of uh, academics, PhDs, and sort of business people in our sort of founding team. And we're based just down the road in Oxford Circus, uh, so very easy for me to pop up here. Um, we're just opening our first international office in the next uh, month or so as well. So it's kind of got our background. And, um, what we're trying to do really is transform the way that students learn, engage, and discover academic content. And we're trying to sort of fo focus on this problem from two sides. So one, from the student side and looking at the challenges they have, but equally looking at the lecturer side and trying to specifically save them time um, and look at how they can help sort of improve their teaching or their teaching quality through things. something that's really simple, easy to use, and isn't time consuming. Um, and that's going to be a big, big thing for us. Um, so, actually, I'll, I'll go back here. So, I, I think uh, the easiest way for me to explain it is looking at the problems or the challenges that we looked at originally from both sides of it. So, the students that were telling us that we were speaking to were telling us that when they went to get help outside of the lecture theatre, they had a couple of options. They'd either go directly to their lecturer or they'd go to their peer group where they might just Google and look for something online. Um, there's a couple of challenges with that where what, they, what they'd find is that actually if they went to the lecturer, or emailed the lecturer, um, they may wouldn't get the response as quickly as they would have liked. Um, also, when they received the benefit of that help, no one else really saw what was happening. Um, also, there was a big challenge around shyness uh, of students, especially this sort of 18 to 22 age group, often didn't want to be the ones to put up their hands in class, or didn't want to be the ones that email or contacted the lecturer directly because they were a bit embarrassed about the questions they were asking. They thought, oh, this is a bit stupid, this is a bit silly, and I'll be judged for that even though that's not the case, but that's the way that a lot of students feel. Um, there's also a thing about students when they go for help, they'd often just go to their peer group, so that might be just two or three friends who are taking the same module as them, when in fact the person that's best suited to help them is the person that's sitting behind them in class, but just due to the way that students are socially, they wouldn't normally just go and talk to that person for help. So we wanted to kind of bring a platform together that could sort of solve those issues. Um, on the other side of it with lecturers, lecturers were telling us that um, when, they, uh, when they did have let students come to them for help, when they did help one of them, um, they'd often get, into tr not into trouble, but there are some cases of this, where if they're helping one student, it wouldn't be great if they could help all students at the same time. Um, also, with, when they were, students were asking for extra help, often the same questions get, kept coming up again and again. So if a lecturer is getting an email or seeing a student, it might be there's five people all roughly asking the same thing, and that's not really the best use of time. And, we spoke to our lecturers where their inbox was getting full, especially around exam time, on those sort of challenges. So what we were trying to look at how can we bring those two things together in a sort of simple and easy to use way. So we, kind of, we built, this, uh, built this platform, which I'll demonstrate in a sec. And from the lecturer's side, what we were trying to get outcomes from here were less time to manage the students and the students' kind of questions outside the lecture theatre. Um, we were wanting, because of the way it works, having improved learning outcomes, so students are performing better in, be it their exams or their coursework, or whatever it is that that particular lecturer is focused on. Another thing here is what we found from students is they were very keen on what of having lecturer time, of having sort of private lecturer time. And obviously, lecturers are very time pressed, so anything that can help them with that will lead to higher teaching marks. And 
we, um, our um, chairman of the business is the, on the Higher Education founding, Funding Council for the UK. Very aware of uh, one thing we're very focused on is the National Student Survey. As you guys probably know, next year the National Student Survey marks have been made public so university, university students can compare university with universities based on quality of teaching. So something where, lecture, where the students feel like they're getting more lecture time and better quality teaching will reflect best on everybody. And something else as well where year to year, a student emails me a question, um, as I'm the lecturer and I answer him. If somebody asks me the same question the following year, often they'll have to write that thing out again from scratch. Um, and we've got a system that means you can store that information year to year and have it automatically sent to people at the right times if the lecturer wants them to. On the student's time, on the student side, is yeah, getting support from not just your friendship group, but from all the other students that's relevant to you. Um, identifying problem areas. So with our platform, because questions are asked publicly uh, in an easy to use way, uh, lecturers tell us that they can see actually where there's been mislearning early on. So in week three, they might have missed, some students have misunderstood the concept. Um, and because of that, the lecturer can identify it rather than finding out in the exam time that they've mislearned it and they're all getting lower marks. Um, the thing of feeling like they're getting more lecture time because everybody gets the benefit of one piece of lecture time. Um, another thing we do is that even if students aren't on the platform, we have this thing called a digest. So students can get updated about what's going on at a frequency that suits them. And we've got algorithms that work out what's most relevant to them. So that means that if I'm not looking at the platform for a week, uh, I'll get an email, which I've let's say, set weekly, saying, here's the things that have gone on this week, here's some questions that lecturers have recommended as being important, and here's some other areas that um, we think will be interesting to you because we know you're interested in, say, um, price economics and econometrics. So um, with that, so um, the platform roughly looks like this, and I'll show you how it works. But it's very simple in terms of very easy to use platform where students can ask questions, they're seen publicly, answers can come from both lecturers and students. Um, and what we find actually is over time, the answers come from different groups. So to begin with, we find that 80% um, or so of the answers come from the lecturer. But as students get more confident in using the platform, by the end of term, it's normally about 70 to 80% of the answers come from the students themselves. So again, that means the lecturer can act more as a curator of knowledge rather than the font of all knowledge, which is where we're trying to get to with it. Um, yeah, there's sort of email updates for questions, and uh, we have reading lists, so the lecturers can put their relevant reading lists on. So I'll just uh, show you quickly what it looks like. So, uh, so um, let's just make that a bit smaller. Yeah. Okay. So the platform looks like this, and it can get integrated into existing VLEs, be it Blackboard or Moodle or wherever, as well as working on iPads and phones and everything. You know how much students use those. Um, and it's a very simple to use platform. So um, students here, if they kind of ask a question, we send here, they kind of ask a question, just decide what that question is going to be. Um, they can ask the lecturer privately or ask the whole class, and they have the option of asking it anonymously. And that helps the, the student over often overcome that shyness problem. Once a question comes up here, um, it's brought up into the left hand panel. Um, and so we, um, you can see how students and lecturers can respond to that. What we find here that's very useful is that a lecturer has sort of superpowers. So a lecturer can decide whether to recommend a question to the whole class or recommend an answer if it's very good. And students can sort of filter the things they want to see um, in that way. So they can say, um, I only want to look at the things in the past week or I, can, I want to search all the topics related to leadership. So you can just have a quick search button um, and all, all of those topics come up. So, so here's sort of we, we spend a lot of time uh, where we're based. We're kind of, we, we sit into university, sit with university students and lecturers about twice a week, going through just the, the real subtleties of how it works. So, we make it very easy for students to be able to use it. Um, and this is why we've got sort of scrolling questions on the left hand side, um, answers on the right. So, the way that students normally do it, they'll all quickly log in, scroll to see what's most relevant to them, and doesn't take up too much time. And so it, often for them sits open whilst they're revising um, or trying to learn. Um, so it feels like they're always getting support there. Um, and it's really as simple as that. I'll, I'll show you this sort of some of the results we've had from other classes um, and what people have been saying about it. Um,
So um, one thing, uh, this top area here is what we call the Mythos class. Um, so with Mythos class, uh, this is pre-Easter. I'm looking to see what's been happening post-Easter. You can see in the blue column is the percentage of students that signed up. So you can see after uh, first week, half the students signed up. By week three, it was 80%. And by week five, 80% of the students have sort of signed up to the platform. Um, and we can see what we're encouraging for us is not only are the um, total number of people who signed up increasing, but week to week, the percentage of students who logged in at least once a week, and that for us is a what we call an active student, is increased. So we're seeing that there are about 75% of the students who are logging in at least once a week. And the green line shows how often they were doing that, and that again is increasing. So we're seeing by week five, the average students logging into the platform about twice a week to see what's going on. Um, so just some examples of what we've seen in other classes. Um, so in UCL, we had, we've worked quite closely with UCL. In this business module, um, we've seen that average time on site was 30 minutes to 60 minutes to visit, and we, um, which for us is very encouraging because it shows that students are finding it useful. And what we find in particular is in the build-up to exams, this is where the site is very, very useful, very powerful, because it's a time when the students normally need the most amount of help, but it's the time when questions they're asking are probably most relevant to the, the rest of the class. So just asking your friends or asking the lecturer directly won't benefit everyone. So we had 10,000 interactions from a class of 75 in about a week and a half just in build up to exam. Um, for the results from this from this lecturer, we can see that... Um, sorry, is that just on Miko's course? No, this, this, is, this isn't sorry. Miko's course. This, this is UCL. So this, oh, this, 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 this is one course, but yeah. Sorry. This is one course yeah. for 75 students. Yeah. Yeah. So this means the average student was looked at I suppose, like 130 different things over a 10 day period on the different side. Um, with this class, and what we see probably most with this is that um, the exam results improved, you know, the quote is the exam results showed that the lower half of the class significantly improved versus previous years. And what we find generally with the platform is that it, it's best suited to pulling up, in terms of exam results, the lower performing students. So we, we hear it time and again, so so the lower quartile or the lower, lower half, they get pulled up towards the average or towards the upper end. Um, this is because um, the students have the concepts explained often in different ways by other students. And the lecturers explained it in one way, and in fact they actually learn it in a slightly different way or they're looking to understand it from a different perspective, and the other students are very good at helping, that, that, uh, helping in that way. Um, in terms of time saved, um, this, yeah, that's saying they can save considerable amounts of time because also with this, um, Rather, if, rather than students emailing the lecturer they, like they used to do, um, by having it up on the platform, the lecturer um, received an email once a day that grouped together all the questions and deleted all the repeat questions or things that uh, are repeated. So it's actually, rather than having 40 emails in their inbox, you had one email and it was about five questions. So it was kind of simple for them. Um, we, we did a survey with the, with, the, um, with the students afterwards, and what we use is we use uh, so we uh, questions based around the National Student Survey, uh, which has to do with response of lecturers, teaching support, um, and we did a report um, of a, with this one, there was a 20% increase in teaching quality from two surveys, and this is because we had a, um, another class with the same module running without the platform, and so we asked sort of about how that Blickbook influenced them, and overall teaching quality, and we saw it was 20%, 28% higher when they used Blickbook. Um, at UEA, so University of East Anglia, this is a larger module, um, so this has 200 students. Um, yeah, 93 percent participation, so 93 percent of students love me on average at least once a week. Um, but that was sort of over the period of the course, went up to about three times a week, especially during exam periods. This shows the example of where at the start, 70 percent of answers were from lecturers, but by the end of the course, it's 80 percent from students. And this is because the, what we see is whilst the lower performing students use it to sort of inform their revision. The high, sort of the better, or more high performing students use it to practice their revision. So if somebody asks a question, and the higher performing student be like, I know, I think this is the answer. And they use that as sort of a bit of a feedback mechanism from other students. Um, yeah, this uh, is from, yeah, Kay. So Kay was saying that, the, yeah, for her it wasn't so much about exams, it was more to do with reports. The reports were better standard than she thought, than they, thought they would be, particularly at the lower end. Um, with her as well, she was able to highlight a lot of issues early on in the courses. So with her, there was a big mislearning, I think, in week five and six around some lab reports. And she was able to address that in the class much earlier than she would normally because it was highlighted on the platform. Um, again, we had a student uh, um, 
survey at the end of it, looking at the influence of Blickbook, um, averaged out a 30 to 7 percent increase in teaching quality marks. So we asked them a uh, teaching uh, number of questions, one to five, rating your professor and teaching quality. And so that's where we, so we got to with that. So I think what's good for us, it shows that it works across a number of different um, disciplines. We're, we're being used in uh, most disciplines that you can do at universities, we're being used by about, we use it at 30 percent of universities in the UK um, by academics. Um, and we've been requested by students to be used at 90 percent. So often we have students who will be revising at home with their friends and they'll hear about this and they'll contact us saying, can you get my professor to use it? So we're sort of in the process of trying to get those other people, those lecturers in particular, they've talked to us about. Now what, um, the, way, the way it works, in t one, one question that often comes up is funding and like paying for it and things like that and what else can happen with the platform. Um, what we do is sort of the standard thing is if lecturers want to use it um, as, at a sort of base level, where that's uh, normally free, it's a free thing to use it if it just plugs into your Moodle or your Blackboard or standalone. Um, and every university where we're in place has an existing BLE. About half of them we integrate with, um, half of them we, we use as a standalone. Um, we can do some interesting other things. Um, it depends very much on the unit. I mean, this, don't look into the details of the graph. This, um, but just as an example, different universities have got different priorities. So some are, for example, uh, looking at how can they avoid students dropping out, can they get indicators of students being likely to drop out. Others are looking at how can we improve the performance, academic performance of our students. Others are more focused on teaching quality. And so we can customize what we, the information we get, because we have a massive amount of data at the back of this. And we can use that at a module level, so we have a dashboard customized for lecturers seeing what's been going on, keywords that have come up, or at a departmental level, so seeing where maybe um, some of the students are performing less well, or some of the lecturers need more support, um, or at a university level comparing departments with departments. And we're working with quite a few universities in the UK and abroad um, on well, live with doing this. But again, it's very much on a university by university basis, because we find that each university has got their own, own things they're looking to do in the sort of short term. So yes, that's kind of us and what we do. Um, yeah, Mick has been using the, 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 the module, or using the platform for one of his modules this term. Uh, so yes, I hope if there's quite any questions or thoughts on, on it, I'd love to answer. Oh, a couple of things. Uh, yeah. First of all, um, what's the module, the nature of the module that Mick has been using? Uh, it's, it's strategy. It's a strategy. 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 Level yeah. 3. Yeah. Yeah. And, and secondly, you said about the fact that the, what you termed was the, uh, the base level um, uh, facility is free. What comes within the base level? So basically, so it's, 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 it's what you saw with the platform. So basically, the platform, how it works, um, all of that system, is that's, that's free. Um, if you want to customize things or get some add-ons, so for example, so one university wants it so that um, they, when they email, a student can, have, can ask questions and do answers by email rather than having to log on. So um, we've kind of set that up for them as, as a charge. Um, most of the time, to be honest, though, it's the analytics that the, lecture, uh, that the universities are interested in. So the platform itself runs. So the way that we normally work is, um, yeah, at the universities is that uh, we'll do a number of pilots to see the impacts the thing that the universities want to get to impact. If they'd like that, then it's kind of expanded in use. And then from there, we can have this data and we can go talk to the university saying, listen, we've got this interesting data. You're, you're trying to do this. We can tell you these things about it. And then that's when we, we kind of look at this, how we do it. But it's on a, yeah, individual basis. Okay. Um, can you talk about integration with uh, Moodle and stuff like that? Is yours integrated with Moodle or is it standalone? It's, it's standalone because we're running the uh, the, um, the the brain, the web brain uh, pilot. Um, so we don't in that much or use the uh, the uh, the uh, blackboard at all because we're driving students through to the brain as a repository. And, and the big book sits there as a standalone link. And in terms of your using of it this year, um, roughly how much input per week is it taking of your time to either generate questions or respond to answers? Just very few. Uh, you know, the, the, the interesting thing, you know, I, I, I don't see the analytics, so I, I, I have no, no, no data. Um, I know you have access to it, 
but you know the the student the up the technical was was quite high um, as as part of said. but maybe this is a, uh, a a sign of desperation but but our students don't really engage that much as as they could and, and should um, and I'm not quite sure why that is. Um, there was a quite a bit of build up before the, the first big assessment. But then after Easter there has not been a single query at all. Last term there was I mean it was pretty new, so we didn't really push it that much. And I think the takeoff was quite low. Uh, but there was a significant build up before the, the final exam, which was good. And, and that's where, to me, the, the value of this my work comes in, is that rather than having to deal with so many different emails and uh, students knocking on your door at any given point in time, and you're repeating the same same questions over and over, you're able to put that through the, the, the platform to the, to the community. Uh, the, the second benefit is that, uh, as Dominic knows, is that it's a very good module by 100 students and we have five or six different seminar groups and that allows an element of control to to make sure that the, the sort of key questions that come across are addressed across all the seminar groups so we are all singing from the same 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 songbook it's a non-trivial advantage yeah and i think that's that's brilliant have you had any look at our stats? Um, not with the not before coming here. Which I, yeah. um, we were we've just uploaded a sort of new build to the site, so all this, yeah. this, the logins were having to kind of rearrange to fit with the new look, the new kind of feel to it. But which, yeah, it's something which we've kind of we, we're looking at because we we monitor we've obviously got all the data coming in, and yeah, we're, we're kind of a bit confused as well about why we had good interactions and everything working well prior to Easter, but then maybe they've gone away. Forgotten about it, hasn't kind of brought back to it. Um, yeah. So yes, it's your. Yeah. Yes, I was going to ask you about the integration with Blackboard. You said that it can be integrated. It will appear as a menu, or so how? Um, so basically, in say, your normal Blackboard um, or, or your Moodle, um, you will do an integration to this kind of appears within it. So you'll have, um, let's say, your course room. And you just click a button and it says look, click, click, yeah, and then inside see. the module window, the, uh, the, the R's will appear. Have you got a building button then? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've, um, definitely got one from Moodle. We, we have integrated some Blackboard stuff before. I'm not the expert on that, I'm afraid, but well, no, we, we, we have okay. done it. And we because can actually, that would, be, yeah. that would be a chat that I can have outside of this meeting with you, actually, because at the institutional level, you know, if we had that as an option in the Blackboard template, and then people that just yeah. wanted to use it could just say, "All oh, right, that's an option," and just yeah. and just go ahead. But we have we need, and, and also the cog that the university likes the we've got a learning platform, so anything that runs through the VLE is going to be much more supported than it is. Yeah. Anybody now can go ahead and use it, but if I make it sort of embedded into Blackboard, it's going to get the right support mechanisms to go with it as well. So you say anyone can. You're proceeding at your own risk. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. yeah. Um, yeah. And that often goes with IT support. Um, one of the issues about linking it tightly to Blackboard is that Blackboard controls classes. And so that you would have a cohort just doing business strategy for this semester who could talk with each other. Presumably one of the advantages of having it outside perish the thought of the Blackboard environment is you could actually have multi cohorts students collaborating in the same space. Yeah, so there's two things that we do there. Um, one is yeah, you can set the parameters of the space yourself um, on a in the room by room basis. So, uh, let's have a look. So here uh, it doesn't look so neat because we've got this construction screen size, but here's the different modules you can be in. So I can say I'm in these three modules or for example we've got we're down in Brighton at the moment with biology. They've got um, master's course, but it's quite small numbers, only 10 students are doing a number of different modules. 
um, but so some, some students are the same, some are different. And they put six modules together um, so we can combine it. We also do something where you can actually link to um, other students who we know have the same level of you with the same interests so and sort of the same standard of universities um, to kind of see what they're doing. Um, and questions can feed into your, into your stream here uh, based around that. And that's at the basic level? Well, that's more about yeah, that's basic level, yeah. So you could get final year business students from across the planet potentially contributing to your thing? Yeah. Yeah, so, and it's, yeah, so when you... Uh, so when, when, you when you say across the planet, it means uh, students outside the regions? Yeah. yeah. yeah so they they really exist. Yes, yes but, uh, but <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about uh, the connection with, uh, really with them. You, you share the databases with all the students. We, 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 we don't, we don't, we don't um, so what we do is we can tell, so let's say your regions, we know your third year, we know you're studying this module, and we know the question areas you're looking at are these types of things, and the other questions in the module are these types of things. Then what we do is we can say, okay, we can match that type of profile, and even potentially the type of learning you are um, with other people, and we can say, but you found this question useful and this answer useful and you looked at this a lot, so therefore we can feed in these other questions. And uh, another thing we've got with the algorithm, it doesn't really show us so well here, but um, so we've got this thing which is sort of related questions. Um, and this is sort of building up, uh, improving over time. We've, uh, one of our PhD uh, kind of founders has got a PhD in uh, machine learning. So we can say, because of your, what you've been looking at previously in your profile, you've looked at this and actually these other questions are relevant to you and they may be from your module or they may be from outside. So for example, there's one here which is about a case study which is called Semco and actually people who are looking at that, we found them, it's actually, although they're asking about this case study, they're actually very interested in different leadership methods and they can look and we can, we can see that, have the related questions to do with the leadership methods and then that might be some internal or external and then from what they look at that, we might go, oh, actually what you're looking at is the specific type of leadership method. And then we can have the questions and answers based around that. And we, we anonymize it to some extent, so um, so obviously we don't want to have any sort of data issues around that. So, um, but, so in effect, you're doing the kind of equivalent of the Amazon, people have looked at this book and also looked at that book type approach. To some extent, but yes, it's slightly more personal because it's that, um, yes, so on, on a broad level, yes, but we like things a bit more personal because there's a challenge, so whether we think of it and why we think something like this works quite well is if you ask a question, say, uh, what's happened today, so with um, co the co-op bank not buying Lloyd, Lloyd's uh, banks um, on the high street, what's the implication for existing banks um, like HSBC? And that might be asked by a first year student who's uh, doing a psychology degree, who's just doing an introduction to business module because they're interested in it. Or it could be a PhD macroeconomic student who's looking at it and the answers you'll get will be very, very different, although the question is the same. So we, what we have to do, and what we can do a lot of work on, is trying to match those to say, oh, you're type, this type of person, this sort of knowledge. And we're, to be honest, we're not, we're not perfect at it yet, but that's kind of the ambition for us. Two other questions then. Do, you, do students self-enroll, or can you, uh, you know, I'm similar to Mika, I've got 125 students, can I block book 125 students onto it, yeah. or do I have to rely on them to do it? No, no, so, this, yeah, so we, we, we can do both. Um, it's up to you which one you want to do. Pros and cons of each. Uh, when, do you, when we block enrolled people, is we contact them and we say, listen, you've been enrolled, um, and you click a button, and then you're logged in, and everything's fine, then they reset their passwords. Um, one challenge with that, I'm not too sure what the case is with regions, we've got other universities where the, uni the university email addresses aren't as widely used by the students as their other email addresses. So that means that you're, because you give them the option to change the email address, but it means they often aren't as responsive as you'd like. But okay. fundamentally, yes, it's your choice. And uh, can you embed things like web links within the text and stuff here? Y yes. Um, I'm not live on the computer at the moment. I didn't uh, but supposing you want to say, do a question which relates to a news article, supposing there's a, there's a web yeah. thing on the BBC about the co-op, um, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so here we've got discuss articles, so you put your article link. Um, I haven't got one live, but then rather than showing me the question here, so you have your question, and it'll be saying, yeah, did you Yahoo do the right thing when trying to change their culture? And it will have, you know, often like with other social media, Facebook or Twitter, they'll have the image from the article and the link to the article just there. You can see the source of the article and sort of the first little bit about it. So, yeah, we can, you can do that. And, sorry, to, um, no, that's, given it, we're now week nine. Yeah. 
I've got exams in five weeks, something yeah. like that. Is there utility in me at least exploring this in the next few weeks, particularly to help them with the challenge of learning from each other towards the exam time? I'll, I'll have a biased opinion, um, so I would say yes. Um, <laughs> uh, obviously, um, I, I, my, my view is with this is I think if and I think Miko put a lot of interested to see what Miko says, but our view is that this is the way the students learn is often in, they'll kind of back things up to the last minute. So the closer we get to exams, the more useful the platform is. Um, as also as you'll sure you find in weeks week two and three in terms, teams aren't as engaged as they are later on. Um, so later on. It's fine, it's very easy for us to set up. So I'd, I'd, I'd say there is, um, but Mikko is the one who's used it. Um. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think um, you'll be very busy. With this, this or with, generally? With this, with, well, I mean, both. Um, I, I don't, how, how, do you, how do you handle your pre-exam prep at the moment? With fear. <laughs> um, uh, the thing that I've done, and I'm, I'm still debating, I've done these voiceover presentation things, yeah. which the students really like, so they kind of get like a two minute or three minute, this is a technique, and they find that immensely useful. My concern is that's driving down my lecture attendance, because they, they've got this as a crutch. Um, and I, I think, given the nature of our students, they tend to over-rely on it, rather than actually doing something old-fashioned called reading. Yeah. And yeah. Um, the concern I have with this is, is, is trying to create a dynamic where our better students would contribute without feeling they're giving away the good stuff that some other sods who's going to use in the exam. And I, 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 I'm, I'm trying to work it through my mind, knowing some of my students, because I've got some people who could quite well respond to this, if there was the kind of the alpha group that just shared with the alpha group, they might be quite interested. The idea that someone is freeloaded in their groups gets their insightful insight into the pros and cons or whatever it is. I'd, I'd, I'd need to think through that. Uh, two, two, two things. One is that I made a decision not to use this in a proactive way. Okay. Okay, so it is a reactive way. So the students come in with the questions. Because if I, and, and you know, we, we, we did this couple sort of uh, questions that you guys asked anonymously, and, and I, I, I responded to get the ball rolling. But if I start using this as as a as a as additional tool to make material available, yeah, there's not going to be anybody in the lectures. Exactly the same. So I'm taking the questions in, um, and then I will either share them with everybody and, and make them recommended questions, and, and perhaps expand them more a bit. Um, so you know, although the better students may better students may not have any questions. Because they master this stuff, you know, fully. But um, I think that this would be a platform for the weaker students, the, the students who are shy, not asking questions in the lectures, not coming to see me, and, and, and or even sending emails. So this, I thought, would be for the, the bottom of the pile to bring them, bring them up, run the, 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 the alpha group. And so what? I can see how they could gain from it. Who would contribute? If it's not you, how do you get a dynamic where some of the students contribute to that? I haven't had it at all. Yes. Um, so what other lecturers have done is they've told sort of the whole class, hey, we're gonna, I'm going to put some hints about the exams or some, some questions, some base questions to kick you off of things that I think you are important to know how to answer. And if you imply or you can say directly different lecturers do it in different ways, then actually this is almost sort of like almost like not a mock exam, but by your answers I will cast my eyes over them and I will be able to comment and say, Oh, this is a good answer, or well, actually you missed out with a couple of points there. It gives them practice as well as sort of a bit of feedback that they may think they've got the great answer. They don't actually know until the exam, and by that point there's no way to change it. Well here if they've got a good answer, you might say, Yes, that's right, but you missed out this one aspect. It gives them a bit of a kind of a bit of view on it. So. Um, yes, yeah, so and that's, that's often, often how it's, how it's, we've seen it used elsewhere. Well, how, how intuitive is it for the students in the learning? Have you observed students actually? Yeah, we spend, yeah, same week, we put two mornings a week with, with university students. And we, we employ a guy purely on that, so it's very rapid. Yeah, I mean, the thing, our, our view on this is we 
you don't want to be, we, we can come in and we can train people up on it and everything else, but you want it to be so intuitive and simple, you don't need any training. And that's why we do this layout where everything's going to be there in front of you. Um, you can immediately, if it's, sim it's similar to some extent to existing systems that you use, um, but yes, yeah, so very intuitive. Um, we haven't had any lecturers come back to us saying, the students didn't understand it, they didn't know that. What we do have is lecturers using it slightly, not odd, but different ways. So one lecturer, I think we've got about three lecturers now at one university, they use it live in class. So as they're, as they're teaching, they'll use they'll they'll have it in the background, and then every 20 minutes or so, they'll just check, and then just, the student might go, oh, I didn't understand this thing, or, but they don't, they're definitely not going to put it in their hand, but by here, it's anonymous, and everyone will get the benefit of it, and they can put it in their hand. So. Just, just from being a student myself, yeah. um, and using something like this, if you, I don't know, if you've said something or shared something with the group and someone's used it, my name is against what I've written. So would that, if they're taken, if someone else said, oh yeah, that's a really great idea, I'll use it, is that plagiarism? Uh, I think there's some aspects of definition that we need to be a bit careful yeah. about. Um, uh, I think how can they do that for an exam anyway? Because with the exam, presumably the content is kind of generic. Well, sometimes yeah. you can come up with it. It happens. You'll see an exam where people have got pretty much the same answer. Because some of our lot are very good at brain dumping a memorised answer. And you know, if you have four responses which are almost they've looked at the question exactly the same way, we're getting into a difficult area. Very difficult. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we some lectures what they'll do is they'll put last year's exam questions up and similar thing. But if something's um, too close, or they don't want to answer it. They'll say um, they'll they, they can just they'll go onto the platform and we can we can remove questions, or we can they'll lecture or divert them into something else, or talk about it in a very broad way. Is there some skill in how they define the title of their question? So I can imagine if this thing rolls for like ten weeks, you could have quite a it could become quite a mess. Yeah. So um, what we found, um, so there, yes, there is a skill. Um, but the way that the students use it, it's not so much of an issue um, because the only times we've uh, we've got classes up to 900 people on this, and what you find is that there's a, there's a finite amount of questions. It's not as many as you think, and if you've got a larger class, this means the questions happen very quickly after class rather than three days later when one student finally is doing the revision. So we don't have many classes where there's just tons and tons of questions. The one type of class where we do have that is when it's relating to reports um, and studies. So it's often with first years you haven't done university reports before or lab reports and it's a lot of questions around formatting and things like that. And then what we can do there is, um, can, uh, just, um, I've got an example here, but you can, we, with those we, we set up tags, so you can say, listen, it's either a, like a format tag or a sort of academic tag. And then, when, and then you can filter it sort of along those lines. So I don't want them the academic questions. So you could say exam questions, course questions, theory questions, or something. You yeah. Could yeah. So then, yeah, and then so different lecturers do that in different ways. Some just do it without the tagging, just saying, listen, if it's an exam question, do exam question as the first thing, and then your exam question. Right. And then as you can search exam, and all the exam questions will come up, and you can filter those how you want. Them. You said, I mean, I, I, I quite like the idea of potentially, in effect, creating FAQs that I could use for follow-on modules. Because um, that way, we can progressively evolve this. Yeah. That's possible in some way with this? Yeah, so it's something we, we, we've got some capability with at the moment. We're building more in the summer. Um, we've got a lot of, kind of insight, I think, to this, because what we find is a lot of lecturers already have FAQs of some sort, but they're rarely used by students, and we're trying, trying to understand why. I think it's because it's basically a big dump of information, and it's not time relevant when they're learning it. So what we do with this is what we can do. We can set it up so you can almost feed in questions at the right time, so we know that the FAQs for week three were these. So week three, if those questions don't get asked, they can pop up here in the week three time. And then you can look at what you asked, answered it last time, and you can either put that answer in automatically, or you can see the answer you had last time and you can maybe edit it, or you can delay it or do a new one. So there's a few different options for you. But I think the big thing from our side is that just dumping, like if we had, if you had a, a week, one, week one and there's 30 questions in here, a student's probably not going to get engaged with it because it's not that relevant with them. 
But if you build it up over time and they come back once a week or twice a week to look at it, that's where they kind of, you get the most benefit. And we can start doing this tomorrow, so we can kind of go to bleakpop.com yeah. and open up an account. And yeah, you basically, we'll, we'll set it up for you, but haven't automated everything at the moment. But literally, we just need your module name, um, module code, who, who the lecturer or tutors are, if there's more than one, um, a reading list if you want that, and then how you want to sign the students, so we can get it set up. You would need their email. Yeah, or yeah, the other, we don't have to. I mean, we like that way because it means everybody's automatically signed up and you can say, listen, you're signed up and these digest. So even if you're not logged into the platform, once a week automatically or so, or once a week before, like, you'll get what's been going on in the platform in an email. It didn't have to be on. Um, but if you want to do it the other way. So, so we can provide the college emails and then yeah. it's up to them if they want to provide yeah. an alternative. So yeah. they, they can then set their lead. Yeah, so, yeah, so, when, yeah, so when we'll send them an email. So what we, we, do, we do is we'll ask the lecturer when you see them saying, let's say, you're, you're teaching on a Thursday afternoon, tell them then, and after that lecture, we'll time the email to go out straight after that, so they're expecting it. Well, you've not set it up so that we could do it just for now with one lecturer and me as a dummy student, and then play around with it before we sign up 125 students. Is that yeah, possible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we could do that. Can I, can I just add one, one more yeah. thing? Um, you just use, um, related to the, the, the lecturer and student interaction. But if the if the university is thinking about rolling this up in, in any in a significant way across the institution, I think that there is a uh, something that requires consultation because the, the data that is being generated um, tracks tutor performance um, and exam performance and. You know, I that I'm, I'm a bit a bit uneasy about because you know different tutors may want to use the big book for different purposes, yep. and, and that means that the data that comes out is is different. And, and if you are using this to assess tutor performance with the student body, I think we can get into all kinds of problems. I'm looking at you, Dominic, in terms of the joint consulting committee. Uh, I think, yeah, I think that has to be. Resolved. That was one, yeah. one of my background fears. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, yeah. It's the same that is happening with Blackboard. Isn't yeah, it? exactly. The same. Blackboard, but they can monitor if we are using it, how we were using yeah, it. Yeah, we, we could do all of that if we were asked to. But I would refer it back to the staff conference. I mean, Arnold got up on that stage and he said, look, actually, technology is not there to replace contact time, etc., etc. Is there as a background to the support of face-to-face -face teaching? I mean, well, that's, his, that's his starting point, and I'd always refer it back to that. He's, he's always said that, so it's in that context. Um, but, and again, I must put the rider to the fact that I mean, if any, any of you individually, you know, speak to Barnaby at the end, and he can get you on the system and everything. But it's. You are doing this independent, almost, Lee. I mean, I'll be there to support you and come along and do what I can, but the support is going to come from Blinkbook, not from the institution. But having said that, you know, if how do we get to a stage where we have systems in place? Well, we've got to have lecturers trying these things out. And if you like it, and, you know, it's, it's the students like it, and it's enhancing what you're doing, then maybe we can get a blackboard building block and then give that as an option to more people in the college. Because it is moving it along to a more interactive experience for the students. But, you know, I've got to start, I mean, I've got, it's not like I'm saying IT is, you know, they can't, they don't want to cope with this sort of thing. You know, legitimately, they have to think about what we can support and what we can't support. They can't support everything. So we're just really just trying something, really. That's why I've invited you to come in. It's something different, isn't it? We've got a typo of receiver. Yeah, yeah, I know. We've got a new push went live yesterday, yeah. so we still had to text it. Still well, it would be usual, Dominic, if you, if you would sign up on this, because that would give us some comparison, because it's some comparison to where it's the same module, but two different schools. Yeah. A slightly different student body. Um, I think about it a bit. Yeah. I'm not unpressured at the moment. I need to work out the amount of work that this could add to it. But it's interesting. So we do this five.
via email or we go to the site and there's a um, you, you there's, I mean, I think probably e email is probably the easiest for now. So I'm Barnaby at blipbook.com. And if, yeah, if you guys are, if, I mean, I can happily stay around here for a chat. If you guys want to email me with any questions or want to set up a course to try out or anything like that, you contact me directly. It's probably best to go via you as a Chris. Yeah, yeah. Just so you can kind of see the interest and kind of funnel it into one point. This is a good presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Um, I can't remember what next week's session is on, sorry. Are you going to turn on the camera? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a real conversation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs>